we have this interstellar visitor passing through our solar system, comet called 3I Atlas. It was just discovered in July, July 1st, coming from the general direction of the constellation Sagittarius, which is in the Milky Way. But they've tried to track it back, and they figured it's gone past so many stars at this point that there's probably no way to tell where it really ultimately originated. But they figure, no matter what, it came out of some star system somewhere, and we just don't know where. So it was actually discovered because of NASA, they funded a system called ATLAS, part of the overall planetary defense effort, meaning at least detect objects that may be a threat to Earth, like crashing into it, and wiping out the dinosaurs again, that kind of thing. First one was Oumuamua. That was back in 2017. It seems like it was just yesterday, doesn't it? But actually, and then 2019 was the second one. So this is the third one. In case you're wondering how it got called, that 3i means it's the third interstellar object. It's only the third one we've ever actually detected. No doubt we've had them all through our history, but we didn't have the instrumentation to detect them. We didn't realize it. The second part of the name, the Atlas, that's just named after the discoverer. And in this case, the discoverer is the system of telescopes. There's more than one. Um, that particular one, again, is in Chile. It's the Atacama Desert. It's up high. There's no clouds. There's no water vapor. You know, it's a great place to put lots and lots of telescopes. And there are, in fact, lots and lots of telescopes, not just the United States, even China um, has one of their monitoring stations there. What's interesting is we didn't even notice it until already it had gotten inside the orbit of Jupiter. As it came out of nowhere, nobody knew this thing was coming, and you don't have much time to react if it does. So it's a good thing it didn't hit us, because it would have been a problem. Now later, they realized that actually they did have photographic records stored in their digital archives that went back to June 14th, and I think maybe they found some even earlier than that. That's not that unusual. It takes some time for people to recognize something. Basically, nobody can look at all the data that's out there. There's just too many pictures. And so a lot of that's computer processing, and you're really just looking for one pixel kind of movements, and they're not that easy to spot. That's pretty typical, and that's one of the issues for planetary defense is how do you detect that something is coming in in enough time to do anything about it? I've got some timing on this. So they first discovered it in July when it was just inside Jupiter. It just passed Mars. Well, you can see how it's going on this particular moving kind of thing. So it just passed Mars. It's going to go closest to the sun at the end of October, and that, where it's just inside the Mars orbit. That's pretty much as close as it gets. It never comes in quite as close as Earth. And then it's going to go, unfortunately, the way the position is, it's going to go, from our viewpoint, going to go behind the sun. So we're going to lose track of it for a while. It'll reappear um, around December or so. And, then, of course, it'll keep going and never come back. But anyway, that's the sort of time scale we're talking about. Basically, from first discovery in July to, um, well, at least going past, on the way out, going past Jupiter, probably around December, January. We'll be seeing it through at least March, I think. It depends on you know, what counts as a sighting. When it gets down to the point where it's one pixel wide on the most high-resolution telescopes, um, you know, that, that's pretty much it. So there is this question that comes back to, how old is this thing? And the basic answer is, well, we don't know. But we do know that it came from another star system, and the closest one, just projecting back, you know, on the path, the thing is probably literally at least billions of years old, probably older than our solar system. And again, we don't really know that. They try to estimate it based on various things, like the ratios of different isotopes on the, the water and the, the metals right. and stuff that, that vaporize. So they can make some guesses about it, and it's hard to tell. But there will be papers generated about this for the next 10 years, no doubt. And people will come up with different theories, and you know, one way or another they'll prove or disprove uh, the possibilities. So we don't really know right now, but it's a good, good chance that it's older than even our solar system. And they say that partially from the general direction that it came from. You know, Given that the thing is going, in, from our standpoint, in almost a straight line, it's very, very hard to look back. You know, you look at the, the equations of motion, you work your way back, it's pretty hard to really guess, go back a billion years, you know, and simulate, try to figure out where it came from. So that they can't do. But they think in general it came from an area of, of our galaxy that has a lot of really old stars. Okay, so we probably already covered most of what's on this slide. One really key point is, how do we know for sure it came from outside of our solar system? Well, the most obvious thing is just based on the fact that it's going really fast. You know, just like we have an escape velocity for Earth, you know, if you're going faster than a certain speed, you're not going to stay in orbit around the Earth. You're going to go flying off. And there's one for the solar system as well. And it's way past that. So, you know, we're out there. It's, it's probably within the escape velocity for our galaxy. 
that's harder to estimate. So, you know, who knows? But just for reference, so this thing is going 130,000 miles an hour, easily twice the speed, probably more than that, of any other comet we've ever seen. For comparison, Earth's escape velocity would be 25,000 miles per hour. Now, that's if you were at the surface. Now, that's sort of a theoretical number, because if you're going that fast, you would probably just vaporize immediately from the air friction. But, you know, from a standpoint of how the basic equations work out, that's what it would be. There is no such thing as a single escape velocity. It depends on where you are. You know, so the further out you are, you can be going slower and still escape. Anyway, it's on this trajectory, passed by Mars, and it's going through, as you see in this animated picture here, and it's not coming back. What's the mass of this thing? I think they could do it based on how much the sun perturbs its orbit. They're guessing, okay, maybe it's 33 billion tons. Maybe it's a lot less than that. They don't actually know that. But still, the point is, it's, it's pretty heavy. If that thing had actually hit Earth, it would have been pretty bad. Yeah, keep in mind, this thing, okay, even the 33 billion tons, that's nowhere near as big as larger comets that are even from within our own solar system, like Hale-Bob. I think, I, I don't even know what that one is, but it's a lot more than this, maybe 10 times that. So On the other hand, it's going faster. So the kinetic energy it carries, that goes up as a square of velocity. So if it's going twice as fast as a normal comet, that says, well, it's going to at least have four times the effect when it hits. They're thinking that probably some of the best pictures will come from some of the telescopes that are orbiting Jupiter right now, uh, JUICE in particular. They're, they're ready for it, but, you know, that's not going to happen until January or so. And the next best one might be actually from Mars orbit. We have the Mars Orbiter. The problem with that one is that with the government shutdown, they're not updating their website. So we're not going to see those pictures for a while. And also then Mars goes behind the sun as well. And I think the earliest we could even see that one is around February. And presumably the government's going to be back in operation. So watching it, it behaves differently than a lot of other comets have. And that's not surprising. It you know, came from outside this system. It's going a lot faster than other ones. So you can't expect it to necessarily be the same. It has somewhat of a tail, it depends on what wavelengths you're monitoring. I guess it's more obvious on some than others. It has a teardrop-shaped area of dust around it, which is typical of comets. It has somewhat of a tail. In this particular picture, the tail isn't that obvious, but in others, apparently, it has. And by the way, in a picture like this, they're tracking the comet itself. That's a time exposure while they're tracking it, so you're seeing blurred stars in the background. On the Hubble telescope, that's this particular shot, and then a series of others around that time probably had some of the best estimates. They say it's probably not any bigger than three and a half miles across, but it might be as small as 1,500 feet. And it's hard to tell because of all that dust and everything. You can't really see through it, so you're not quite sure where the edge of it might really be. It is giving off water and pieces of ice, which is typical of comets. Uh, carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide, that's also true, and nickel. Um, they keep discovering more and more things. It has more carbon dioxide compared to water, compared to normal comets. It has different ratios of isotopes, sort of thing. So it really is interesting to say that, okay, this came from a different star system, maybe a lot older. It was different in many ways. And this is you know, possibly some evidence of that. Or, of course, it could be an alien spaceship. But, you know, I don't think you have to make any assumptions on that for this to be an interesting thing to look at going by. NASA itself counted up. There's maybe 12 different ways of observing it. The Hubble telescope, the Webb telescope. The Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, as, as I mentioned, you know, the, as it goes by Mars, that was actually the closest approach probably to any of them. Then there's the ones out there by Jupiter the, or on the way, like the Europa Clipper. JUICE in particular, which is actually, I think, an ESA effort, they're really hoping they'll get some good pictures out of that one. Okay. Other space-related videos or slide presentations by me are available at the link shown here. That includes a list of videos at my YouTube channel so you can view them or subscribe for notifications about future videos. These presentations are mostly made as part of the meetings of National Space Society's North Houston chapter, and the link to that is shown. Topics like these are presented as part of a monthly news segment, and there are also lots of other interesting speakers and open discussions. You can attend in person or online via Zoom. Come join us.